Hey, this is Joel from Weiss. Now this is the second in our series of videos designed to show you how Weiss Handling Systems provides a flexible, scalable, and high-performing solution that's extremely easy to integrate and provides a lot of benefits across your project. Now in the first video, we looked at the HP Series Pick and Place Unit. It's our standard, freely programmable pick and place module. And in this video, we'll show you how it integrates really easily with your PLC or controller. Now the first step to any automation project is to find a solution that solves your problem. The second is to find a way to do it really efficiently and effectively. Now you may have a complex or a high-speed application that you're working on. You may have a control standard that you're trying to align with or develop internally. You may have different experiences with different types of servos or control packages. And you may even have some limiting factors like uh, retrofitting into existing legacy technology. And we'll show you how the Weiss control system really fits well and excels with each of these different types of applications. So we'll be looking at WAS2, which is the second generation of Weiss application software. Now WAS2 can be used to control all sorts of different solutions within the Weiss portfolio, uh, rotary, handling systems, transfer systems, uh, any sort of multi-axis solutions as well. So what we're gonna do is we'll focus on the HP units that we started with in the first video and build from there. So a Weiss control package is built around three key areas. The first being hardware and electronics. So whether you're using an indexer or a gantry or a pick and place, uh, you're perfectly matched up with the control side of things. So the drives, the cables, the software, everything is pre-configured as a standard item. So it's perfectly matched for the system. You don't have to worry about compatibility or interfacing or things like that. It's all pre-packaged together. The second is the software. So this is our WAS2 system. Now the software represents our firmware plus a graphical user interface to make things easy and effective when it comes to integrating the package. Now, unlike other softwares, there's no licensing fees to use with this or anything to be concerned about on an ongoing basis. And the third is that communication interface piece. So this gives us lots of flexibility depending on whose PLC platform you're using to give you the maximum amount of control in an environment that's native to what that package needs. So all three of these pieces together give you a lot of flexibility on the system. Now every Weiss system is gonna include that Weiss controller, motion drives depending on the number of axes you're gonna control, and obviously the modules you're gonna use. So if it's a pick and place or a gantry or a rotary unit. Now that Weiss controller is what's interfacing with your PLC. So all of our firmware and the, um, the smarts behind the system are all stored there. So when you're commanding things like moves or Excel or decel, things like that, it's all happening through that Weiss controller. You're not spending time programming in another language or anything like that. It can all be commanded back through your system. And the nice part is these scale up very, very nicely. So if we want to add additional pick and place units or a rotary table, uh, we have different controllers that give us the ability to control up to 32 different axes. Regardless of the voltage or the number of units, anything like that, you're still getting the same environment. You're still getting the same controls offering. And when we go up beyond that, we have a system called the multi-platform, which gives us dual channel drives that allow us to save some space in a panel We've got many, many, many axes on one system and helping you to save panel space and cost by utilizing these multi drives. So the system that we'll be working with in this demonstration looks like this. We have an HP 70 with an ST75 rotary unit. And to get started, what we'll do is we'll take our supplied cables. So we have an orange power cable and a green encoder cable. And you see that each one of these has a quick connector on the end. So we just get started. We'll plug in the HP. And you'll notice on these that the cables are actually color coded uh, red or blue, depending on which axis we're plugging into here, just to keep things clean and easy for you when you're setting these things up. Now wired back to our little panel here, we have a drive for each of the axes. So two for the HPs plus one for the ST75. And down below, you'll see our controller, which is what goes back and interfaces with your PLC. So here we are getting online with WAS2. This is the screen that you see when you first load up the software. Uh, you'll see on the side here, we have all of our axes that are, we're working with. So there's our ST75, there's our controller. And each of the units, as they're configured, will come with a, a set of I.O., um, some parameters that are available to you. 
the ability to map inputs and outputs specifically to the unit, some position tables, uh, the ability to set up a sequence, and some additional troubleshooting and service options as well. Now we have two main strategies we can use when we want to drive the unit forward and move to various positions. We can set up a sequence which drives to different positions in order, or we can command all of the positions, the moves, velocities, things like that, direct from your PLC, giving you the maximum amount of control. Or you can set it up as a hybrid of both. Either is fine. So in this, we'll show you now how to set it up as a sequence, and then we'll jump over and show you how to set up the I.O. so you can command everything from your PLC. So this screen is going to show you how you develop a sequence. So we can go through and set up a step-by-step -step, uh, list of all the commands that we expect to do in our process which are just selected from a drop-down menu. And from that, we can select either a absolute move to position or a relative move. We can set IO so we can wait for an input or set an output. And both of those IO options are available in either a digital commands, so either an Ethernet IP, for example, communication, or we can do discrete IO, so wired directly back to the unit through optional IO modules. Now, in this sequence we've got here, the lower the pick in place, we're going to close the grippers with an output. We'll wait to confirm the grippers are closed from that sensor. Then we'll raise the z-axis back up to position 2. Then we'll move the position y forward. Wait to make sure that everything's clear below it. Lower down, open the grippers, confirm they're opened, raise back up, and retract the y-axis. Very straightforward, easy to set up, easy to do with a lot of different technologies. So the other method is to be able to command everything from your PLC. So if we go into our CPU module here and we select field bus, this is where we can map out all the inputs and outputs and how it wants to talk back to your PLC. The really nice part here is that you can just grab and drop into the program how you want to communicate and which parameters you expect to see. So here's our inputs and our outputs. And everything is a blend of I.O. or uh, parameters that you expect to see communicated back and forth. So commanding moves, positions, speeds, things like that. And as we go back over to the individual modules, we can see here that we have a set of inputs that can have specific I.O. mapped directly to them. And again, these can be a blend of uh, signals or discrete I.O. And then here are some outputs where we can do the same. So again, blending these things between communication and discrete I.O. So this is an example of what you would see coming back to your PLC in that field bus communication. So these are our outputs. Uh, you can see item one is our IO, three, four, five are our positional information from our HP. And then below that we have our ST75 rotary axis. So things like positions, speed, uh, torque, all of these different things linked back together to your PLC. So there's a few really nice features that come along with doing this level of control. Number one is it gives you a lot of flexibility. It lets you do things like uh, taking a vision correction. So let's say you've got to adjust a position based on a output from a vision system. You're able to do that because it's all monitored and stored in your PLC. The other thing is that from a user perspective, everything is stored on your side. So your HMI interface and things like that is no different really than any other servo-driven interface that you've got on your platform. And the third is that if you want to make a correction to something or you make an update or a change, it's all right there within your control. You don't have to reach for another piece of software or a laptop or things like that. It's all right there and accessible to your control. So just in closing, I hope that gives you a really good idea of how the WASP2 software environment works the level of control that you get back out of your PLC, and the flexibility that you get, whether you've got a tight timeline or you've got a complex application or some real restrictions in terms of what can be used on the equipment because of legacy technology. So anyways, hope you enjoyed watching. If there's more questions, feel free to reach out and ask. We're happy to answer for you. And stick around for the next video, and we'll talk a little bit more about more complex systems.